Back here on Sportsline, the Predators actually playing tonight against the Sharks over at Bridgestone Arena, leading 1-0 after a Matt Duchesne goal. Coming up later this winter, a cool event for Nashville. Not every day we get a new cool, I mean, we get a bunch of new cool events for sure, but it's not every day that you get the first of something in Nashville and you have a chance to do something really, really special. And the Predators and the city of Nashville, coupled with the Titans, will host the Stadium Series game in the NHL this year. Coming up February 26th, a night game at Nissan Stadium should be awesome to see an ice rink out there in the middle of the stadium, to see all the Preds fans of Nashville and surrounding area go out and pack Nissan Stadium for a hockey game outdoors in downtown Nashville. Should be a splendid scene. The NHL is fired up about it. The Preds traveled better than any team ever that was a road team for an outdoor game when they were in the Winter Classic a couple of years ago down in Dallas against the Stars at the Cotton Bowl. And they expect now with the home game that to be even better, plus all the pomp and circumstance that you get here in Nashville with the music, and the festivities and the food and everything that goes around with a big party the way Nashville pulls off parties. The NHL plans for it to be a week-long event at the end of February, culminating with a game between the Predators and the two-time Stanley Cup champion Tampa Bay Lightning on that Saturday night. And just last week, as a matter of fact, the NHL was here in town with representatives of both franchises to talk about the first ever outdoor game and stadium series matchup here in Nashville. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Nissan Stadium right here in Nashville, Tennessee. We are so excited to be here with you today as we are just a few short months away from the 2022 Navy Federal Credit Union NHL Stadium Series between the hometown Nashville Predators. I was expecting something from the crowd, right? And the two-time defending back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champion Tampa Bay Lightning. The game set for February 26th outdoors right here on the field behind us, the home of the NFL's Tennessee Titans. I can still feel the excitement from Monday's victory uh, emanating here in the stadium. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jackie Redman. I'm a host at NHL Network, and I just joined the NHL on TNT as well. We're very excited about that. You know, I actually just attended my first Predators game last night. I'd never experienced it before, a hockey game here in Nashville, Tennessee. And I have to say, the reputation of the fans lived up to the hype. It was awesome. Huge win for the Preds uh, last night over the LA Kings. All right, I'm excited for these passionate fans as well, because for the first time in the Preds' 23-year existence, fans here, hockey fans, are going to get an outdoor game on their turf. Their opponent, of course, will be the Bolts, who have actually never played in an outdoor game. So it's going to be a special occasion for everybody involved, and we've got a star-studded lineup here, you, here for you today. So I'll try to keep things moving. We'll start with NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, it's a beautiful day. Hopefully, when we play the outdoor game, it'll be a little bit cooler than this. Uh, we are thrilled to be bringing another league event to Nashville. When I think about Nashville hosting the NHL, not just how great every game is at the arena, the Bridgestone Arena, but I think of the 2016 all-Star Weekend. Uh, it was our first three-on-three All-Star Game. Uh, we had incredible participation by the country music community, uh, and it was a three-day festival and celebration of hockey. I then think about the 2017 Stanley Cup Final, uh, and all of downtown Nashville was transformed into a hockey town. Uh, I think of the Alan Jackson concert, which lit up Broadway. I think about Luke Bryant uh, on the roof at Tootsie's and the incredible, incredible excitement and support uh, that not just the Predators got, but NHL hockey got. It, it was exciting to be here. And I even think back to when uh, Nashville hosted a draft. 
every time we come to Nashville for a big event, we know it's going to be special in Nashville, and that's why we're excited to bring our first outdoor visit to Nashville, and we will uh, reimagine this amazing stadium. It's going to be a great event, and so I am proud and excited to formally say we're thrilled to have the 2022 Navy Federal Credit Union NHL Stadium Series game here at Nissan Stadium, the home, as we all know, of the Titan. This event it will be a week-long celebration. There'll be more details to come, but as always, you know you can expect uh, the entertainment and music community in Nashville to be an integral part of the festivities of that week. And with that, I want to acknowledge and thank a number of people, starting with the Predators organization, Predators CEO, Sean Henry, uh, General Manager and President of Hockey Operations, David Poyle. Uh, I'm thrilled that players Roman Yossi and Matthias Eklom are here with us today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and on the other side of the, of the spectrum, or the ice uh, will be the Tampa Bay Lightning, two-time defending champions. They're represented today by CEO Steve Griggs and players Victor Hedman and Ryan McDonough. And while this will be the first outdoor game for the Lightning, it will be Ryan McDonough's fifth outdoor game, and he can tell you himself how great it is to play in an outdoor game. I also want to acknowledge and thank Tennessee Titans president and CEO Burke Nihill. Uh, thank you for welcoming us to and sharing your home with us. Uh, this is a stadium that is building its own football traditions, but we think for the outdoor game, we're going to reimagine this place a little bit. We'll restore it back to its normal look, but for, for the outdoor game, we think it's going to be a lot of fun. Also here today behind me is Ron Hainsey, uh, NHLPA assistant to the executive director and frankly without the great cooperation we get from the players association and from the players these events wouldn't be possible uh, and I also want to acknowledge perhaps most importantly is Navy Federal Credit Union manager of branch operations Ronald Fletcher uh, for their partnership their sponsorship and name branding of the Stadium Series game here, and I'm delighted to announce that we have a multi-year extension of our relationship designating Navy Federal the official military appreciation partner of the NHL. Again, this is a multi-year extension, uh, and we're delighted with the fact that Navy Federal is focused on serving active duty military um, members, veterans, and their families, and what they do in the community is outstanding, so we couldn't be more proud to continue this association. This is the second outdoor game for the Predators. As I mentioned, it's the first for the Lightning. Uh, the first Predators outdoor game was the 2020 Winter Classic against Dallas at the Cotton Bowl. But what we have here as well, and it, it, it's a term that I have rejected and and really don't like even repeating too non-traditional i don't even understand what that means anymore because tampa and nashville are as traditional as any hockey market uh, so these two teams have a help to obliterate that term uh, these are great organizations with great fan bases uh, and they really lead the way in terms of community involvement fan engagement and game presentation so having these two teams we think is going to make the stadium series game really special uh, also in terms of redefining things this game will be on tnt which is already defining the way that we connect with our fans on television they are off to a great start and they've done an amazing job of hiring talent such as Jackie Redman uh, who has been a long-term part of the NHL network tickets go on sale 
public sale tomorrow. There's been a, an extensive pre-sale, but public ticket sales go on tomorrow, Thursday, October 21st at 10 a.m. local time, central time. And tickets will only be available through Ticketmaster, the official ticketing partner of the NHL. With that, let's look at the video board and see what... All right, that is NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman getting us introduced to the stadium series and what's going to come here. February 26th, Lightning and Predators at Nissan Stadium. We'll have more on that coming up. Our phone lines are open, though. 737-7767 is the number. And we've got Wayne here. Wayne, good evening. Welcome to Sportsline. Hey, Steve. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for the call. Steve, uh, I'd like to get your take on a couple of things. Sure. Do you think Julio will be uh, in good shape by playoff time, or he seems like he's still hurting to some extent? And the other, the other uh, comment I'd like to hear you comment on consistency uh, of this team. I, I, my hat's off to the coaching staff and the team the last two games. It was excellent. Uh, but I don't know if the consistency will hold out due to the fact maybe in the past years it hasn't been that good. Yeah. And I, I'd just like to get your take on it. And I'm going to back on out of here now and hear you. All right. Sure. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, <laughs> well, we all remember the Jets game, don't we? And, and that's the big issue for the Titans. They have proven now that they can beat the elite teams in the conference, the elite teams in football. And there was a stat, I saw it last week, I think it was after the win over the Bills, that against the elite teams in the NFL, or the, the teams that have been really good in the last five, six years, the Patriots, the Bills, the Chiefs, the Ravens, I think the Steelers were in the mix there. Might have been a couple other as well. But the really elite teams in the AFC, who the Titans have matched up with multiple times, they have a significantly over 500 record. I think it was 10-6 and six at the time against just those teams, like the top-level teams in the AFC in the time that I think Mike Vrabel has been the coach. And then obviously they went out on Sunday and they beat the Chiefs as well. So that's what this team has shown that it can do against the top-level teams in the AFC. It's, it's a contender with them. It can compete with those teams. I think consistency has been the issue because, again, we remember that Jets game. We remember multiple games against the Jaguars. We remember other games against lowly teams. Last year in Cincinnati against the Bengals where the Titans just flat out haven't shown up, where they've laid an egg. And that's the issue. I asked earlier about the schedule coming up. You've got two more difficult games here, at Indianapolis and at Los Angeles against the Rams. Once you get past those two games, the schedule lightens up significantly. The Titans may be favored in every game for the rest of the season after that point, if they continue to play good football. But what from their track record would lead you to believe that they're going to run off, say, seven games in a row. Maybe they should, but will they? The, the track record seems to suggest otherwise. So I'm with you, Wayne, in this regard. The Titans have given us a glimpse of the last two weeks of the upside, of what they can be. What we need to see now is them hit that level more and more often. They can't go to Indianapolis this weekend and lay an egg. They've got to play at a high level. And if they do, by the way, I think they win. I think they win pretty easily in that game. And then they're going to have to take care of business in those games that they need to win. Now, if they go to Los Angeles and lose to the Rams, or if they lose this weekend, that's not the end of the world. Those are solid teams playing good football right now in tough road environments. But what you need to see is those games against the teams that the Titans are just flat out better than late in the season, you need to see that consistent level where they continue to perform up here. 
And if they do that, they're going to win those games. There is not going to be a Jets or a Bengals performance from this team. So historically, they've gotten better as the seasons go on with Mike Vrabel and this coaching staff. They improve as it goes, and they play their best football late. That's the expectation. That's what needs to happen again with this team. And hopefully what we've seen in the last week is just the start of this team starting to realize what its true potential is. And the other question Wayne asked about Julio Jones, that's a concern. Because you're talking about a hamstring injury. And hamstring injuries, especially with wide receiver, they tend to linger. They tend to always be something that you have to work through. You're in danger of re-injuring it at some point. So that is a concern for the Titans. But I think one thing you hope for there is that they manage him throughout the weeks where he doesn't put a lot of strain on that hamstring. And then he can go out on Sunday and give you what he can give you. And what we've seen in the last couple games is that may not be the Julio Jones that we're used to seeing in the NFL for a full game. But you use what you can, and hopefully as the year goes, you get more and more out of him. Buffalo game, he was the pass offense in the first half, essentially. Five catches, 59 yards. He was, he was the guy in the first half of that game, and then he essentially couldn't go after halftime. On Sunday, he was a bigger part of the game plan, but still most of his work, most of his catches came in the first half when the Titans were really buzzing on all cylinders. In the second half, they ran the football a lot more, didn't need him on the field for that, and essentially they were milking this lead. They didn't have to throw the football, so they didn't risk him in that regard. I expect you'll see more of Julio Jones this weekend in Indianapolis if they need him. If they're up big again at half, I think you're going to see him kind of take the foot off the gas in the second half again and continue to give himself some time to work its way back in. If they're in a game in the second half, I think you'll see more of Julio Jones in the second half this week. And that's what you've got to hope there. So it is a concern because hamstrings do linger when it comes to wide receivers. But I think what you've seen the last couple of weeks is the start of getting him back to what you hope he can be. And hopefully they continue to, to bring him along, bring him along slowly, get more and more out of him each week. And then by the time we get to the playoffs, which was the ultimate question, he's full go, ready to go across from A.J. Brown. And you have that one-two receiver combination that we've been dying to see at full strength with Derrick Henry in the backfield. We still haven't really seen that as well. They played the last two weeks. We still haven't really seen that. And that's something Titans fans are looking forward to. Take a break. Much more when we come back. You're watching Sports Live on News Channel 5+. Plus.